Hey there, how are you today? My name is Dana Damara and you have landed on Astrocast. This is your report for the month of August 2024. Now something I want to mention before I dive into all the dates that I feel are fairly important for you to remember. I want you to remember this, that this is just a general overview of what's going on in the planets in the sky astrologically during the month of August. What I have to offer you are just dates and they're going to coincide with your in particular natal chart differently than anyone else's. So don't get stuck on anything. Don't like think that if a new moon hits someone in one way, that's going to happen to you too. And if it doesn't, don't feel left out. (laughs) Okay. This is really important to me. So let me talk about uh, a little bit of things that are happening. First of all, this month will be a little bit easier than July. Uh, Maybe not easier, maybe that's not the word, but maybe the word is more um, uh, enthusiastic, okay? We had, in the month of July, we had our second full moon in Capricorn, which was about discipline and really getting clear and maybe things dropping away because we said, hey, I don't want this anymore. And so the universe responded, right? And then we also had a bunch of planets going to retrograde. So those planets still are in retrograde, by the way. (laughs) Uh, And we'll also have Mercury going to retrograde this month, right around the new moon. But we start off, uh, first of all, uh, with this beautiful, loving energy that will mm, open up for lack of a better word, portals of connection and love and abundance and optimism and enthusiasm, okay? Now, that starts with the new moon. Now, on the same day, on the same day, we have Mercury going into retrograde. And so we have this beautiful new moon, which I did do a full report for us, so you can go back and listen to that. But we have a beautiful new moon in Leo on August 4th. Now, the new moon in Leo is going to bring us to a, um, it's just fun energy. It's very um, exploratory. It's uh, about the heart. This is heart medicine. This is, you know, Leo is loyal. Leo is love. It's ruled by the sun. So Leo kind of gets a bad rap about being dramatic and egotistical, Uh, but as a Leo son, I can tell you right now that Leo's always, I'm going to speak for myself, Leo's always rule with their heart, always, 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 no matter what. Now, the thing with this Leo new moon is on just a few hours after Mercury will go into retrograde. Now, keep in mind, you guys, that anything that I talk about. So when I say new moon happens on August 4th, it's not like we wake up and just switch on a switch and like, oh, it's the new moon. (laughs) All the energy is leading up to that like two, three days before. And when I talk about Mercury going into retrograde, it actually starts to go move into its shadow a week before. So we could already be feeling the energy around Mercury and retrograde. Mercury will go into retrograde on the 4th, uh, 4th, 5th, and then it will come out of retrograde and go direct on the 29th. So the whole month of August, Mercury's in retrograde. Now, before you're like, oh God, here we go. Zip, don't do that. (laughs) What you want to think instead, okay, this is a whole new paradigm of how to think of Mercury retrograde. Think to yourself, okay, my communication patterns, the people I communicate with, the way I communicate, right? The the avenues that I take to use communication. How can I slow it down just a little bit? How can I slow it down and really speak from my heart? How can I just really communicate uh, to myself every day what's important to me? So this, think of it that way instead. Instead of thinking, oh, the whole month of August, we're gonna have Mercury retrograde. Think, wow, I'm gonna have this whole month to decide who do I wanna play with? (laughs) Whose sandbox do I wanna be in? Who do I wanna invite into my sandbox? Think of it that way, okay? Uh, Now on August 4th, right around that same time, Venus will move into Virgo. Now Venus and Virgo is um, 
really romantic. Virgos are uh, healers, first of all. Uh, Virgos are also about planning and having like a plan of action. So with Venus and Virgo, this is about um, maybe planning dates for yourself, maybe planning a new wellness routine, right? So anything that has to do with Venus, finances, love, money, creativity, Venus is in Virgo. Use that energy appropriately. Uh, the fifth is when Mercury goes into retrograde. Now, Mercury will be in Virgo. Mercury's happy in Virgo, right? So it's always a time when we can dive in a little bit deeper in our thought processes. So just be mindful of that, right? It's actually quite beautiful. Um, August 8th is the Lions, Lions Gate Portal. <laughs> so, you know, people who pay attention to astrology, we love Lions Gate Portal. We love Lions Gate Portal because it's 8-8. Eight, eight. It's abundance. It's money. It's um, connection. It's infinity. It's um, it's this beautiful, beautiful energy that becomes visible. And why does it becomes visible? It's because this is when Cirrus, which is brighter than the sun, actually becomes visible in the sky. So Cirrus returns to the sky, right? And this symbolizes a sense of rebirth in ourselves. So maybe you've been sitting with a decision, maybe you've been um, sitting in a little bit of a creativity slump. Maybe you've been asking for some sort of sign. Uh, right around the Lion's Gate is a beautiful time to really get quiet and listen because it will come through, I promise you. Um, August 13th, Mars is going to conjunct Jupiter. Now, when Mars and Jupiter meet one another, you know, I talked a little bit about this in the new moon. So, on the new moon forecast, uh, during the new moon, Mars and Jupiter were getting a little closer to each other, but they will uh, create a, a conjunction on the 13th. Now, um, Mars is about initiation, okay? And Jupiter is about expansion. Now, Mars can sometimes be impulsive. Jupiter can like say yes to too many things. So you have to be mindful. It's powerful energy that's asking us to be bold, courageous, quick in our decision making process and then move. But what you don't want to do is scatter your energy all over the place and say yes to too many things. So get really what is it that I really want? Remember, new moon, sit with it. What do I really want? What? Who do I want around me? What is it that I really desire? Who makes me really happy? When do I feel the most um, connected? That's where you make these swift decisions from, not from a place of being all over the place, okay? All right, so then we have the 13th through the 20th. We have a T-square between Mars, uh, Jupiter, square Venus, and Saturn. Now, this is a cool, um, and, and I, I use that word purposefully, it's a very cool, very rad uh, transit, right? So when we have Mars and Jupiter, which I just talked about, squaring Venus and Saturn, you have these four planets, right? Mars and Jupiter, swift moving. Uh, we want um, uh, mm, instinctual action not impulsive let's know the difference instinctual action expansion wisdom knowledge um, learning growth fun like all of this right speed and so we have that together and then we have it squaring which is a tense aspect with venus and saturn so venus and saturn venus is love abundance money creativity and it's sitting with saturn which Saturn wants us to take responsibility. Saturn wants us to slow down. Saturn wants us to follow the rules. Saturn wants us to, you know, um, pay attention, to listen, to take responsibility for ourselves, right? So we have that energy squaring each other. Now, remember, Mercury is in retrograde. So Mercury is also asking us to slow down. So you may feel slightly restricted. You may be like, Oh, I see. I see. I'm going to do this. I want to do that. And then bam, something happens and you're like, shoot, I can't do it. Dang it. Don't get upset. I mean, you can. I shouldn't say don't get upset. Um, you know, notice when things aren't going exactly the way you planned and then ask yourself, where is this restriction actually supporting me? 
It could also show up in you creating boundaries for yourself. So if that Jupiter energy is too, you know, too expansive, too extreme, and you're like, wow, this is so cool. I'm going to say yes to this, 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 that might not be so good. <laughs> you might have to say, mm, I feel a little overspent. I need to slow down. I need to set some boundaries. Okay. Um, this is, this is a beautiful energy to manifest exactly what you desire. If you go slow, if you're patient, if you're present and you're listening. Okay, don't be all over the board with everybody else's stuff. Um, now, Mercury retrograde, when Mercury went into retrograde, it was in Virgo, but then it starts moving backwards, so to speak. Okay, and so now it's going to go into Leo. Now, Mercury and Leo is unexpected changes, unexpected shifts, um, you know, coming back to this idea that we have these new possibilities. So maybe with Mercury and Virgo, you were like, oh, I have this plan, this is so great. Now Mercury is back in Leo and it's like, what about the fun? <laughs> or what about this? Did you think about this? Did you think about that? So again, it's just trying to give you a moment to expand your awareness and perspective around what it is, what you desire and your how to get there. Um, and then on the 22nd, the sun's gonna move into Virgo. Okay, now when the sun moves into Virgo, yay, the focus is on everything Virgo. All right, so this is always a nice shift when we uh, shift sun signs. This is just a new season, a new energy, um, heading toward the end of the summer for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. On the 27th, Venus is going to trine Uranus. Now, a trine is a really positive aspect. And it's this is almost the end of the month, right? Venus trine Uranus, Venus again, abundance, love, money, creativity, trining unexpected outcomes, unexpected shifts, inspiration, higher mind thinking, freedom, liberation. We are going to be offered opportunities to express ourselves differently, to um, offer up our love differently, to maybe we're offered up some brand new job, for example, or a new relationship comes into play that is, is it really what you thought, but it's not a problem because you realized you were thinking and that's where the problem was. <laughs> so pay attention to how you're expressing yourself and is it really in alignment and then know that uh, this energy will help you shift those way where you're not authentic or aligned. Um, yay, on the 28th, Mercury will go direct. So this will be amazing. Do keep in mind that, um, I mentioned it earlier, when a planet goes direct, it's still in its shadow stage for a little bit afterwards. So, you know, it's going to, when, when Mercury does go direct, it will give you some deeper insights, maybe something that wasn't revealed will be revealed. It's a beautiful way to um, kind of, tie up the end of the month, if you will, the calendar month. And just, I would say, always listen to your intuition. It's going to tell you exactly what's necessary. And then the end of the month, the 29th, uh, really the last um, thing that I feel is, is really important and supportive to understand is Venus will move into Libra. Now, Venus loves Libra. You know, Venus loves being here. It's beautiful energy to finish off the month with. It's at home. It feels radiant. It feels alive. It feels the inspirational creativity coming through, um, you know, we're heading toward the, again, the end of the summer season. So it's like, wow, this is really wonderful. So bathe yourself in, for lack of a better word, bathe yourself in aesthetics, right? Like how can you beautify your home? How can you beautify your wardrobe? How can you express externally this sense of deep, um, beautification and connection with love and internal comfort uh, in your outer world. Not a bad month, you guys. Okay, so that's why I don't want you to get stuck on Mercury and retrograde. Oh, boo hoo. <laughs> There's all these other great things happening. And I really invite you to focus on them too. Um, I, gosh, I want to just say thank you so much. You guys, it's such a, um, 
such a gift to be able to kind of play around with this energy and share it with you. I really appreciate you listening. And uh, again, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me at danatomorrow.com. Have such a beautiful day, truly. Namaste.